How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and men and women, and people? People. Everybody. I'm Julia Sumner Miller, professor of physics in this strange, uncommon place. And here we do strange things with nature. And nature does strange things with us. We ask, for example, as follows. Here is a disc to be likened to a wheel, and I have marked a point on it on the edge and a point halfway between the edge and the center, and a point at the center. And I roll the wheel, and I ask, what path does this point on the edge pass through? Consider it as follows. There is the wheel. There is the ground or table on which it rolls. Here I have put a point P, and the wheel rolls. And how do you think the path looks that the point goes through? Answer. It can never get higher than this. And here is what it does. And this is called a cycloid. And it has very remarkable properties which I would invite you to look into. A cycloidal path. The point in the center clearly passes through along a straight line. The path midway has a special name. It is called a trochoid. T-R-O-C-H-O-I-D. Now, why do I raise the question at all? Because this is a wonderful mathematics to explore. And the cycloid has some very special properties about which I shall talk another time. So you see, a rolling wheel is not something just to pass by and forget about. It is something to look at very circumspectly. Looking good, looking good. <laughs> in this place, we do not know these modern things, plastic. We make our own straws, in fact. The problem is as follows. I wish to drive a straw through the potato in such a fashion. There it is. I'm going to do it again. There it is. And I so enjoy it, I'm going to do it again. Oh, by the way, when you pull it out, there's a little piece of potato in there which you can French fry. Or German fry, or just fry. You see, this is the way I make my French fry strips. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Oh, didn't quite make it. Now I'm going to do it another way. Going to hold the straw. Watch it. There it is. And somebody says, what is the physics therein, Professor? And I'm going to try now to make it clear. The straw itself is not rigid enough to take a compression delivered to it by this thrust. See, it isn't quite, it bends. So what I do is grasp the straw tightly, squeeze it closed right there, trap some air in there, and then when I make contact with the potato, the compressed air behaves as a piston and gives the straw rigidity. Let me do it again. Watch it. Pinch tightly. There it is. Or if you wish, close this end. The air inside is compressed. Watch it. Oh, not quite. Somebody says the experiment failed. We must not say the experiment failed. I did not do it too expertly. Watch. I'll try it again. There it is. Oh, I drove out a piece to cook and fry. So, what is the virtue of this little uh, time with you? Simple things are not trivial. They must be explored circumspectly and looked at very sharply because there resides amongst them, in them, there is wrapped up in them some extraordinary principles of nature. Now, finally, a dilemma for you to contemplate until we meet again. We will imagine these two containers, one holding milk and one cream, and they are identical. Quick now, which is the heavier? And I shall be with you another time.